If you take just one thing away from this video and nothing else, let it be this. Always keep your word. And I mean absolutely always. This goes for both your personal and professional life. If you ever say you're going to do something or say you're going to follow up on something, do that thing or follow up on that thing. Even if the thing you said you would do, you realize you don't want to do anymore, still do the thing. And I guess sort of the corollary to this is always try to be intentional about the things that you say you're going to do. And if you think that there's a chance that you aren't going to want to do a thing or that you're not going to be able to do that thing, don't say you're going to do it. And likewise, try to minimize the amount of times you say maybe just because maybe can be sort of frustrating for the other side. But that said, if the truth is maybe, then just say that. And by the way, everything we're going to talk about in this video are essentially just lessons that I've learned over the years of my own life and things that, frankly, I wish somebody just sat me down and told me like 10 years ago. And some of this comes from my time in school. Other bits of it come from my time as a software engineer, some of it from my time making YouTube videos, and other bits are just little pieces of advice that I think are very important to personal life that have nothing to do with my career path at all. So based on where you are currently in your own life, different parts of this might resonate better or worse for you, but hopefully everybody's able to take at least something away from this video. Next, I want to talk about a phrase that I've sort of told myself a lot of times over the years and in a way used as a bit of a guiding principle. And that's the phrase, somebody has to do it. For instance, if a kid says they want to grow up to be a YouTuber, it's easy to sort of laugh at that in the same way that we've probably laughed before when some kid says they want to make the NBA or they want to be an astronaut. At the end of the day, the NBA needs players, NASA needs astronauts, YouTube needs creators. These are all jobs that somebody actually ends up doing. So the question then becomes, why not you? If somebody has to do it, why can't you be the one to actually achieve that dream? Now, I'm not saying to not have a backup plan or even that these are the only paths worth pursuing because they definitely are not. However, whether you are a kid or a full grown adult, if you have some dream, that dream is potentially worth chasing. And remember that somebody is going to achieve that dream, so ask yourself, why is that not going to be you? To be clear here, there is a good chance that the answer to why is that not going to be you is going to be a reasonable answer that you look at and say, yep, okay, I'm not going to do that. But there's also a good chance that there's not a good answer for that and that you should try to pursue it. Essentially, I'm just saying that usually chasing these aspirations is going to come with some significant form of sacrifice. And it's up to you to weigh the pros and cons and figure out if it's worth doing for yourself, but don't just totally discount it because it seems like some fantasy dream that a kid would have that isn't actually realistic. Communication is the most important thing in nearly every aspect of life. And this is going to say sound ridiculously simple, but in practice, it isn't always that simple. So in personal relationships, if something is starting to bother you, tell the other person and tell them as quickly as you can before it becomes a bigger issue rather than waiting until after it's too late. And even at work, if you're unhappy with something, speak up for yourself. Nobody else can read your mind. And frankly, most people aren't thinking about you all that often, and they probably don't even know that they're doing something that might be making you upset. And likewise, positive communication is super important as well. So if somebody does something that you really appreciate, tell them that you appreciate it. It's going to go way further than you actually think. It's also important to be a timely communicator. So don't be that person that takes two weeks to respond to some email or text. Now, this does not mean you need to be just glued to your phone at all times. I don't think that's a good thing. Just try to be reasonable and respectful of the fact that people reach out to you for some particular reason and making them just sit there and wait and wait and wait on some response is just not the best thing to do and it's not what you would want them to do to you. Be a self-advocate. With the exception of maybe your parents, nobody cares about you the way that you care about you. Your manager, for instance, they probably want you to succeed. But that said, they have a lot of different things going on in their mind, as well as they might not even know what success actually means to you. So tell them what you want and work with them to build an action plan that's going to be step by step of how to get to that thing that you actually want. And then as you're working through that action action plan, remind them periodically that this is the thing you're working towards and that you are following all the steps that they gave you and even potentially going above and beyond those steps. You never want to be that person that works for say six months or a year. Then you go to your manager and say, hey, look at all this good work I did. I think I deserve a promotion because ultimately they're going to see that as you've kind of just been doing your job. However, 
if you go to them and you say, hey, remember that action plan we made? I've been following it to a T and I think I now deserve the promotion that we've been talking about for the last six months. It's going to be much easier for them to say, oh, wow, yes, you did do all the things that I said you need to do to get to this promotion. So it's going to be just more likely that they actually grant that promotion. Find somebody that you can just talk to, somebody that you truly feel like you can just trust with absolutely anything. And this can be a family member. It can be a best friend. It could be a therapist for a lot of people. And in some cases, it can be different people sort of depending on the context of the thing that you actually want to talk about. Also, by the way, maybe this is common knowledge, but I recently discovered that at least in the US, the vast majority of health insurance actually does cover most, if not all of the cost of therapy. So if that is something that you're looking to get into, know that there's a good chance that you might actually be able to do it without spending any money at all. And I remember growing up sort of thinking, that therapy or just like talking about your feelings in general is sort of like this thing for the week, but that's just not the case. And I think for the vast majority of people, this is going to be something that's very beneficial to your life. So I would just say to make sure that you have this person in mind that is a person that you feel super comfortable talking to so that inevitably when some rainy day comes, we're sort of prepared to deal with the situation at hand. Because at least in my experience, just like bottling up emotions and not talking about things is never the right solution. Give back as much as you can. And this can mean different things for different people. But if you're in a position to financially make donations or otherwise help people monetarily, you should probably do that. But even if you're not, there are so many other ways to give back. This could mean mentoring people who are younger than you or earlier in their careers than you, or it can mean just volunteering at various charitable events and essentially giving back with your time. But whatever it is, whether it's something tiny or absolutely huge, I've never met a single person who said that they regretted giving back or otherwise helping somebody less fortunate than them, and I'm sure that you won't regret it either. There's a common phrase to strive to be the dumbest in the room, and I think this has some merit in terms of finding places that you can actually grow. However, I would say an even better phrase would be to strive to put yourself in rooms with people doing the things that you actually want to be doing. For instance, if you're at work and you look around and there's nobody around you who seems to be doing the types of things that you want to be doing in say five years, then it might be time to look elsewhere. For me, this was a big part of my decision to leave Facebook and ultimately join Algo Expert in that I looked at these people like Clement and Tim at Algo Expert who were doing things that were super interesting to me and things that I could see see myself wanting to do in say three years, five years down the line, I didn't get that exact same feeling at Facebook. I loved my job at Facebook, but it didn't have that same feeling. And ultimately this led me to take that risk and to leave that comfortable job to join Algo Expert. And that was one of the best decisions that I ever made in my life. Don't burn bridges. In your personal life, you might find that there's times when you decide to cut off communication with somebody for one reason or another. But even if you do that, try to do it on good terms. It might be hard to imagine now, but but five years, 10 years, 20 years down the line, there might be some reason that you want to reach out to that person. And just usually, I think there's no good reason to be holding grudges or to burn those bridges. And the same thing with work. If you decide to leave a job, give a normal two weeks notice and try to leave on good terms. You never know if down the line, you might want to come back to that company, if you might want to ask for a reference from your old manager, or if maybe you'll just run into some of your old coworkers at future companies that you work at. I like to think of this as sort of like building up this bank of goodwill over the course of your lifetime. And this happens both personally and professionally. And you might not see it coming now, but I guarantee you that from time to time in your life, you're going to need to dip back into that bank and it's going to come in times that you would just never really expect. So by not burning these bridges, you're essentially just preparing yourself for the unexpected in the future. Always keep an open mind. Now, this does not mean that you cannot hold strong opinions because you absolutely should. How However, you should detach your opinions from your emotions. If one of your opinions is proven to be incorrect, this does not mean that you did something wrong in some way. It simply means that you were given some new piece of information and you were able to use that new piece of information to reach a different logical conclusion. In fact, I would go so far as to say that the thing that is wrong is that if you never change your opinion when you are presented with new information. And this is because we all hold incorrect opinions, myself included. I've been incorrect 
correct about tons and tons of different things. And not changing your opinion isn't some sign of superior intellect or anything like that. It's more so just a sign of being stubborn and sort of insecurity or an inability to cope with the idea that sometimes you are going to be incorrect. Similar to this idea of having an open mind is also just be okay with saying the words I don't know. Because guess what? We don't know everything. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. I don't know everything even about computer science or software engineering. In fact, I would go so far as to say I don't know most things and I don't even know most things about computer science and software engineering and these things that I'm supposed to know a lot about. There's far more that I don't know than things that I actually do know. And that's completely okay and expected. But what I would say isn't okay is pretending that you know everything because that just leads you to forming incorrect opinions based on incorrect information that you think you know and sort of just becoming arrogant because you think you know absolutely everything when you absolutely do not. Live your life, not the life that somebody else wants you to live. And I know this can be really hard at times when there's a lot of pressure from other people, especially your family, your parents, to do something that they want you to do with your life. And at times, I even think it's okay to make some compromises to essentially keep these people happy. But ultimately, your life is your life, and you should spend it doing the things that you actually want to do. Take your health seriously. Like, we all know this, but somehow it feels like almost nobody actually does it? Like, just eat healthy foods, which by the way, you can do without it being super expensive. Drink lots of water, get a reasonable amount of exercise, and try to get some consistent sleep. All of these things that should be pretty simple, but yet a lot of us neglect, and it's just not a good idea to be neglecting your own health. And this is especially important for software engineers and other people who spend most of their days sitting at a desk. Make sure that you're taking some time to actually focus on your own physical health and not let your career get in the way of that. Lastly, if you are a software engineer, you're going to want to learn how to keep up with all of the different sort of modern trends. And if you want to learn about the biggest trends that I predict for 2025, you should watch this video next.